Thank you, Burak. Uh, it's my first time here. It's fantastic. I hope I get invited next year. I mean, depending on how many tomatoes got in throw to me and so on, but, but really great. Um, I will be talking about, uh, as, as you just heard, a different geographical perspective. I think what uh, might be interesting to you guys here, uh, now that we've been hearing a lot about uh, the Turkish ecosystem, the Turkish tech scene, is to hear a different angle than just here, well, this is how we do it in Silicon Valley. These, this is Steve Jobs, this is uh, Elon Musk. There is actually a world outside of that, and uh, I hope to be able to make a case to you that you can actually learn something from uh, looking a little bit up to the North Pole, a little bit south of it, actually. And you could probably also uh, learn us up there a lot about uh, innovation and doing startups. Uh, what I will try to do is first to give you some presentation about what is happening up in the Nordics, uh, both from a, uh, the standpoint of, of the tech uh, industry, where are we? I have some numbers uh, that I wanted to present to you that I think actually to be uh, mildly, um, to, to put it mildly, uh, are pretty, pretty good uh, when you compare, it, compare them internationally. And uh, I'm also going to give you a case study about how to actually try to run a community. I mean, you have a lot of experience from that here, but we are trying to do it in a, in a I think, in a novel way. We're actually looking at community building up there as kind of a startup uh, in its own right. And I had uh, last night at this great dinner we had uh, over at the Seven Mammoth restaurant, uh, I had a talk with a couple of people uh, about one specific issue of driving a, a community for startups actually lowering the cost of uh, angel investments. I don't think actually we have time for going through those slides, but I've actually added them to uh, my presentation. So we, when you get it afterwards, you can look at it. And uh, I'm here uh, the rest of the day and tomorrow. So if anybody wants to talk about that, just feel free to, to uh, approach me. Uh, this is me. As you can see, I'm actually a lawyer, but uh, I'm not going to bore you with any of the boring legal stuff. Uh, uh, you, can, you can rest assured about that. Uh, I'm, I'm more talking from the perspective of my uh, experience as an entrepreneur myself. Uh, now, uh, not a, I wouldn't call it a, a, a real angel investor, I would call it more a micro angel investor, because I mean, we pay high taxes in Denmark and uh, I'm a lawyer, so even though I'm pretty well paid, I, got, I don't have that much money to invest. Uh, but but uh, micro investor is probably the right uh, term. But I've also been spending a lot of my previous uh, life uh, actually from before the dot-com bubble bursted, uh, building communities, uh, building communities within startups, uh, but also open source communities, e-commerce communities, and things like that. Um, so uh, that, that's actually my, my background. And, and here I'm actually speaking mostly as somebody who is deeply involved in especially the Copenhagen-based uh, uh, tech ecosystem, and that's obviously the reason why I can present that to you as, as, a, as a case study. But let's, let me just give you some words about what is actually the Nordics. Uh, you might know it. Uh, you obviously know that Sweden, Denmark, and Finland, uh, and Norway is a part of the Nordic, but, but actually Iceland is also a part of the Nordics. hope there's nobody from Iceland who, here who, 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 who is getting mad at me for, 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 for having to, for, for, uh, because I have to mention this. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a kind of interesting region in a sense that we are, in a sense, brothers and sisters. We, we speak more or less the same language except for the Finns. Uh, but like brothers and sisters, you live in some kind of a lo love-hate relationship, even though that you are actually some kind of family. And uh, even though that Denmark and Sweden have not been uh, into war uh, against each other for, I think it's about 150 years, it's actually the two of the nations in the world who's been fighting each other uh, mortally for, for, for the longest periods and the, and the highest number of, of times. So it's, 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 it's always been a kind of, uh, of, of a, of a love-hate uh, relationship. And even today that we are a region and we consider ourselves a region out, for the outside world, there is also extremely fierce competition inside. I mean, they, they still some of the most uh, contested football matches is be, uh, between Denmark and Sweden, and Sweden and Norway, uh, and, and so on. And we always uh, compare ourselves, oh, well, we are better than the Swedes, or the Swedes are better than the Norwegians, and, and the other way around. So it's, it's, it might be cozy, but it's also fiercely competitive. Uh, I think also, as I'm stressing, we are, we are considering, I mean, even though that we are separate countries, uh, to a, uh, a large degree, we have uh, begun to see ourselves 
as the Nordics, not as individual countries, but, but to a large degree, especially from a business point of view, we are looking at ourselves as more as a region than actually individual nations. Um, and you can say that, uh, that we are part, we in Denmark consider us per, ourselves a part of a Nordic network uh, where the cities are not really capitals in the different countries, but more hubs within the Nordic uh, network. This is probably one of the best examples of, of Nordic integration. Uh, we had this uh, long bridge built between Denmark and, and Sweden, even though, uh, unfortunately, the last couple of, of months, it's, there's been a reason to reintroduce some, some border checks. Uh, but this is really, really the symbol of, of integration, especially in the southern Sweden region with Denmark. Uh, so, uh, so, so, so much work uh, is exchanged, so many people uh, from Denmark work in Sweden and the other way around, that uh, to many it's considered greater Copenhagen. I, I know that people from Malmö don't like that expression, but, but uh, to a large extent the Øresund region is, is for, for all practical persons, persons one, one region where nobody really cares whether you're from one country uh, or the other. Here's some numbers uh, that I think is, is, are pretty interesting. Uh, it's, it's, it's pretty rich, it's a pretty rich uh, uh, region. We have uh, all the countries uh, in the top 10 uh, with respect to GDP uh, worldwide. Uh, we have uh, a combined uh, GNP, which at least uh, according to some figures back from 2014, made the region, if it was a country, the seventh largest economy in the world. Uh, and I think that that's, that's pretty impressive when you consider how, how big uh, geographically and how uh, few people who are actually living there. Uh, you see, I mean, the, the, from the, 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 the size of the Nordics is actually pretty big. But these numbers are only big because I've included Greenland, the biggest island on the, in the world. And if you take that out, it's actually a very small uh, area compared to, to the rest of the world. But with Greenland, it's a pretty big place. Uh, and also, I find it striking. I mean, going from, uh, from, from a hotel in the middle of Istanbul to the airport, you see how many people are living there. And the fact is that all of these countries are just 26 million. I mean, that's about a third of, uh, of Turkey. Uh, so it's, it's, it's quite a small place in that sense. We have had from a long time back uh, an internal market, uh, which is interesting because we are all part of, of even Norway and yeah, Norway are not part of the EU. Uh, we are part of the EU internal market, but we had a more, much more efficient internal market in the Nordics for hundreds of years. Uh, that's because we share history, um, the language is more or less the same, and everybody are pretty fluent in English. I mean, even old people can, can, can conduct uh, discussions in English about anything else, something else than just uh, pointing a tourist to, to uh, uh, something to see. Uh, and and uh, our culture is, is more or less the same, and, and of course also from an ethnic point of view, it's a relatively homogeneous uh, uh, area of the world. What is interesting is also that the legal infrastructure is actually very, very similar because we decided uh, more than 100 years ago that there would be some com commissions across the Nordics that, that actually came up with all the, the, the important uh, laws. So, so the laws are more or less the same in Denmark and Sweden and, and so on. We also uh, are very much trading with each other. Uh, there are a lot of regions around the world where you don't have trade with uh, your natives, uh, closest neighbors, but here uh, for all of these Nordic countries, the largest, one of the largest uh, trading partners is actually the other, Nordic uh, 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 the other Nordic countries. And for all the Nordic countries also apply that it's very open economies, uh, they are net exporters, they are living of exporting to other countries, so it's very open in that sense. And that actually uh, makes it a very nice place to do business. Uh, these are some, some, uh, some, some statistics or some rankings uh, for general, the general business environment in the Nordics. And you can see that on all these different uh, parameters, uh, the Nordics are ranking pretty well, uh, both from a perspective of innovation, uh, perspective of ease of doing business, uh, networked readiness and, 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 and the general uh, idea of uh, being a, a mostly free economic place to do business. Uh, we are all very high ranking. Uh, in fact, I guess if we were one country, we would probably be uh, number one in all those uh, categories, even though that it's, again, social democratic countries, all of them, so it wouldn't be considered sort of uh, uh, neoliberal uh, economies like the UA, UK or the US. 
And you can see also I've listed a couple of, of other indexes uh, that I'm also cited so that shows that it's actually uh, an area, a region where it's also uh, the, 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 the government and the countries and the societies are actually working uh, pretty well. But that also makes it a very nice place to do business uh, for startups. Uh, and uh, I put uh, on here a couple of, I, I would say, uh, positions that you can contest. Uh, but but uh, I, I hope I can show you some numbers uh, very shortly that will show you that, that, uh, that there's actually some reality behind these uh, positions. Uh, it's, it's a place where we have constantly seen a lot of extremely innovative, world-class tech startups emerging from. Uh, it's also a place where you cannot say that just tech startups within one specific area is thriving. It's actually very broad. Uh, you can see a number of, of interesting areas to be there where there are, in all these areas, world-class companies coming out of the Nordics. I, I failed to mention there uh, a segment that is very close to my heart, which is open source. Linux came out of Finland. And a lot of the infrastructure, a lot of the open source projects are actually uh, either from Norway or from Denmark. PHP is a Danish project. Uh, Trolltech uh, was uh, Norwegian. MySQL was Swedish, and so on. So, so also in that area, it's a very, uh, it, it's been a very innovative uh, uh, place for, for 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 starting tech startups. So we are now seeing. And this is what is interesting, especially interesting when we are t talking, of course, about tech startup. We are seeing the concept, the concept of Nordic startups, not Danish startups, not Swedish startups, but Nordic startups. Uh, and we are also seeing, and I apologize, of course, against to the people from Iceland and the people from Norway, that Oslo and Reykjavik is not mentioned here. But we are increasingly seeing that people are saying, well, we are a startup from Helsinki, we are a Nordic startup from Helsinki. We're not a Finnish startup, but we are a Nordic startup from Helsinki. Uh, and and uh, th these are all startups that are, on the one hand, born regionally, in the sense that they all know how to work with each other. They know how to hire people from Sweden into Danish companies, how to get Finnish angels to invest in Norwegian companies, and so on. Uh, but uh, they are also, from the beginning, global. Uh, and I think that you will see uh, also, again, uh, from the numbers that I'm pointing to, that uh, there are so many success stories of uh, Nordic tech startups that are being brought out into the uh, broader, uh, to, to the global scene, that it must be because there is a, a sort of very well-developed global dimensions of these startups. The reason for doing this is also because uh, you can, uh, as a Danish company, leverage branding, branding by saying that you are Nordic, because then you can also be compared with the best of the Swedes, the best of the Finns. And also, of course, there is the financial diversification. I mean, now the Finns have some kind of problems uh, uh, with respect to their economy. So they can sort of piggyback on the, uh, that it's going OK in Norway and Denmark and Sweden by saying that they are, Nor that, that they are Nordic. And of course, I mean, uh, following out on Murat's presentation before, I mean, even though that a lot of things can happen in a global world, I mean, geopolitically, the Nordics are pretty stable compared to, to other places. Uh, and uh, because of this economy that I just told you about, it's also a place where you can expect that startups will grow sustainably over a long period. It's not like suddenly the state tells you, no, uh, we don't want any startups anymore, or suddenly uh, there, there will be no foreign direct investments in startups anymore. Startups and uh, small companies are such an integral part of the, the general economic structure of the Nordics that this is going to happen, and this is going to be uh, over the long uh, term. And, and, and in fact, the Nordics, uh, that's also what is shown by, by the statistics I showed you before, are probably some of the economies in the world that are most susceptible to benefit continuously of globalization. And that, of course, applies double uh, with respect to, to startup. So what about the investor scenes in, in Copenhagen? I mean, uh, there's plenty of funding. There's plenty of rich people. Uh, the problem is, I guess, at this point more, uh, that uh, there is uh, not enough uh, supply of interesting uh, startups to actually uh, ensure that money is not poured into not very good startups. And that's actually one of the biggest problems somewhere is that you have a lot of people flowing into startups that shouldn't be funded. But if you, if you are a talented, good startup, you can get money. It might not be easy. It shouldn't be easy, but you can get it. And this is also because we have developed a, a, a situation where 
Still, there are relatively few local VCs just like here. That might be a good idea because local VCs might be nice guys and so on, but they are normally not very good. Not because they are bad people, uh, but because they are not exposed to international competition. Uh, so it would be best for most startups to actually get international VCs as early as, uh, as possible. And what we've seen in Denmark is that uh, increasingly top tier international uh, VCs are investing directly in Denmark, Sweden, Norway, Finland, and so on. And not taking them out, but actually investing in Danish, Swedish, Finnish companies, which is, is new and interesting. And then also following up on Nesvet's uh, 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 talk this morning, or uh, his inter the interview with him, we also seen very much, and this is actually critical, we've seen so many more smart angel money coming, uh, because the last five years, so many exits have been made that those people who exited are now reinvesting. And those people are actually smart angel money. We had a problem before, and I don't, I don't hope I offend anybody. I can say that because I, I'm an observer, I'm not claiming to be better. But, but a big problem in a lot of emerging uh, ecosystems is in fact that there is angel money, but those angel money haven't got a clue about what they're investing in. And I'm, I'm always saying, well, I mean, the best thing would be smart money, obviously. You can live with dumb money, uh, because money is money and beggars can't be choosers, but the worst thing are dumb money who thinks they're actually smart. Uh, and that is a problem at a lot of places. It's still a problem in a certain sense in Denmark. I'm not gonna say anything about whether it's a problem here. You decide that yourself. Uh, but uh, but th this, this, is, this is changing dramatically in Denmark and in the Nordics. Uh, we have a lot of smart angel investors now, guys like Nefstad and, and so on. Also, which is really great, we are less dependent on government. We don't, we, we don't, there are very, very few schemes, tax incentive schemes, because that's not really necessary. Obviously, it would be better in some way, but, but that would create also a flow of money into something that might not be sustainable. So this is also a great, great uh, development the last couple of years. One problem we have is, though, that we have absolutely no local market for exits. Whenever somebody is exiting, uh, those people who are exiting, they are selling to Americans, primarily Americans, or going public in the UK or uh, NASDAQ and so on. There are very, very few exits uh, in the Nordics in itself. Maybe that's a problem, maybe that's not a problem, uh, but it's a fact. Let me give you some numbers. Uh, I changed, uh, it's not mo any more Nordic unicorn exits. I think that term has run out of favor, but now it's uh, Nordic plus one billion US dollars exits. Uh, and uh, I'm gonna give you some numbers I think that are very interesting to show the, f the, the strength of, of our Nordic uh, ecosystem. Uh, let me just here mention one, uh, Just Eat, uh, actually a company that I've been following as a lawyer from the very start. They, uh, that's a Danish company that doing more or less the same, I guess, as uh, Nefsat's company was doing. Uh, I, I, uh, Just Eat remained independent and went on the uh, uh, London Stock Exchange and the, I just checked the valuation. It's uh, about 2.5 billion US dollars at the moment. Uh, so so this, is, this is a great story uh, from us. But here are some other names you might uh, uh, know. Mojang, uh, Minecraft uh, creator, King, Candy, uh, is that Candy Cross? Uh, yeah, I think it's Candy Cross, uh, uh, and, and Supercell, uh, and Rovio, and, and so on. Skype, you know, Sendesk, you probably also know. What is interesting is, and I'm taking these numbers from Creandum and take it with a pinch of salt because obviously statistics are always very manageable. You can always find a way to present them in a way that supports your argument. But uh, you could take issue with Creandum, one of our local VCs, if you don't believe them. I, for my purpose, I believe in, them, in, in the numbers. But what is really interesting here, you see that with only 3% of Europe's populations, the Nordics have actually taken in over the last uh, 10 years 11% of Europe's VC investments and turned that into every year, not in total, but every year for the last 10 years, uh, 3.9 billion uh, exits uh, in value, uh, value in exits. And if you look at that, uh, you can see that also from, from a global perspective in that period, in that, over the last 10 years, more than nine, or nine percent of the global plus one U.S. dollar exits have actually come out of the Nordics. That's pretty impressive. Uh, and uh, just to put it in a perspective with Europe, uh, the rest of Europe, including Germany and including the U.K., accounts for uh, just 
8%, even though that uh, there is some kind of skewness uh, in respect to, nine, we have 9% of the population and the rest of Europe is, uh, 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 yeah, that's, that, there's some problems there with the numbers I can see, but never mind. If you could see this, this is actually also, and this is what I want to propose to you as being pretty forceful numbers. If you look at these numbers, you can see that uh, comparing to uh, GDP, our, in the Nordics, uh, the ratio compared to uh, billion dollar US, do, one billion US dollar exits compared to GDP, the ratio in the Nordics is 4.5. In the rest of Europe, it's 0 0.3. In the US, it's only 3.0. And if you look at uh, China, 1.1, and the rest of the world, it's actually 0 0.1. What does this tell you? This actually tells you, I mean, I, again, it's very nice numbers, and I, I think the people who created it want people to invest in, in the Nordics, but it's, it's difficult to discuss that this is actually the place where you get by far the most bang for your buck. B pretty impressive, uh, well, if I'm to say it as a somebody coming from the Nordics. Also, if you compare it, uh, there's some other things here where you compare, the, there's the billion dollars access, the amount, uh, the relative amount of fast 500 uh, uh, companies uh, and, and so on. You see that the Nordic region is, is far, far pun punching beyond its weight. Uh, and uh, my point is, of course, that this has to be come down to something. And uh, I think it, 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 it has something to do with that there is actually communities for, for, for building tech startups up there that are actually working pretty well. Let me just finish by, by briefly touching about uh, on, on these communities. Uh, when we could, created some of these communities, we actually did it in the most simple way. We just agreed on a hashtag. And here are some of the hashtags you can, you can, you can, you can uh, follow. Uh, there are also some, some, some really pretty great conferences uh, you should, if you want to see what is going on there, you should attend Slush, which is such a big uh, conference uh, and, and with a lot of investors. It's actually also encompassing the Baltics. Very interesting place. Uh, and and, and there, there, there is so, ma much, so many things going on with respect to meetings. Every single day there are tons of meetings all over these hubs for startups. But let me just finish by, by saying something about uh, Copenhagen for the win, which is the startup community that I was, that I'm part of, uh, that I helped uh, co-found. Uh, we have the hashtag CPHFTW, uh, startups for startups. Uh, this is when we started, actually, uh, in my, uh, back in my place uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, we went from being a little crowd, we invited uh, maybe 70 uh, entrepreneurs, some of the key actors in the community, to sort of get together uh, and do this. And we've grown into, uh, I think we have uh, meetings now where there's about a thousand people attending every time. And again, if you compare that to Copenhagen, where we have about one million, uh, at most one million inhabitants, the population is one million, uh, that means that in Istanbul you should probably be 20,000 at every uh, meeting. Uh, so it's, 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 it's a pretty, pretty vibrant and, 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 uh, and well sought uh, community. Uh, it's a startup community, uh, startups for startups by startups, uh, and uh, we have chosen this uh, uh, strange ha hashtag. I mean, the, the, you can read about, there's a link there where you can read about the history. I'm just going to say, we did, we, there was a lot of 80 people in a room, and they had to decide what was the, the hashtag going to be, so we had a vote. And in the vote, as you probably know here in Turkey, it's not always the best who wins. Uh, and, and the, the uh, Copenhagen for the win was the least... Uh, 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 common denominator. It was also because uh, why do you come to Copenhagen? A lot of people say, and I'm, I'm afraid if I'm a little bit chauvinist here, Copenhagen for the women. Uh, why do you come to Copenhagen? Some people go to Christiania, Copenhagen for the wheat, uh, or somebody uh, just go there because it's a little microcosm of the world, Copenhagen for the world. Uh, but we are organized as a democracy, uh, which means that it's a very, very open source kind of uh, uh, community. You don't have any influence unless you're doing something. Uh, it's very transparent. All, all our meetings, are, 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 all the, the minutes are out there, all the communication is out on blog posts and so on. Uh, we organized a lot, about a, a lot of small meetings. We call them circle meetings. And then we have these town hall meetings where there are about, about a thousand people, which is basically uh, uh, gatherings of the community every second month. Uh, we have a, a small, there's a small company that's incorporated that has all the, takes all the risk 
uh, and there's a foundation, which is uh, the one that I'm a chairman of, uh, and there are about 80, at this moment, 80 startups who'd actually uh, put money into this, uh, and uh, which is really, I think, impressive in the sense that they put up uh, 1,000, uh, 100,000 euros just from their scrappy budgets because we wanted to have no outside influence whatsoever, no corporate budget to tell us what to say and what to hear about, no government funding, nothing. It should be startups for startups by startups. Here's some of the activities. Uh, I want to emphasize uh, the uh, VC dinners. Uh, we uh, hold every more, uh, more or less once a month uh, VC dinners where, where the community invites uh, international VCs to come to Copenhagen and have uh, presented, uh, have, have the best the, uh, the best of the best present to them. It's, it's a, a crop of startups that are created by the community, not by a single co-working space or a single investor or a single angel network, so there will, will be no bias. It's community cur uh, curated. Um, and we have some, some, some interesting things going on uh, in the future. Uh, one thing I want to mention there is that we are planning to also uh, create a lot of, of databases uh, that will be open for everybody to use, so everybody will get, gather this information about the community and it will be one place owned by the community, so it will not be hijacked in any untrustworthy way by, by somebody else. So, I think that is actually what I wanted to uh, say about uh, the Nordics. I, I think we, we, we have come a long way. Uh, we, we have come a long way by being very open. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm really happy to, to hear about your challenges and how you're doing it. There's always something that we can learn. And I think there's something that you can learn from us as well. Uh, and I think it, it really makes sense to, to uh, exchange information like this going forward. If anybody wants to, to join, uh, to, to come up and visit us and be part of some of the meetings, uh, just follow the hashtag or send me an email. Uh, and, and, and then we'll, we'll uh, exchange information and, and hopefully make the communities uh, even more stronger together. Thank you very much.